I've been asked whether it's uh, important that a cable be shielded. It seems like kind of a no-brainer, but I can see the problems that, that people have making a proper shield. And if you don't have the conductor in your cable matched to the dielectric propagation-wise, which is uh, quite a hurdle to do, shields can be difficult to implement properly. However, that said, other than the obvious noise that is induced into an unshielded cable, which I don't even feel we have to discuss that, there's another function that the shield performs, and it's a very important function, and one that's little realized. In the case of an audio cable, where you're basically going from a low originating impedance to a high terminating impedance, there's a lot of sensitivities uh, come to fore that you wouldn't see in, in other types of cables, particularly in audio frequencies. And the problem is that you have an impulse in the cable, uh, an electrostatic change of pressure, uh, a voltage change, and that is your signal. Well, that forms an electromagnetic wave, and it propagates basically to infinity. Uh, it doesn't stop unless you give something to stop it, which uh, the shield is. Um, and this leads to all kinds of interesting audiophile tweaks and anomalies and stuff when things aren't done properly. Now, for instance, here what we've made is a, an unshielded cable, just a basic uh, pair uh, with no shield. And uh, to demonstrate the involvement it has with the environment around it, uh, what I've done is propped it up on these blocks, and if we pull it out, bingo! And, and as you see, the proximity of surrounding surfaces involves dielectric in the equation. It doesn't have to be part of the cable in order to be involved. It can be the, the sofa, the floor, the concrete surrounding you, whatever the heck it is. And, and so we, we find that uh, the shield works two directions. And uh, I just can't imagine not shielding an interconnect cable. It just uh, <laughs> boggles my mind <laughs> to think of that. So there you go.